right, everyone. Uh, what about this title? A giant wave hits New York City. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Here I am, and I'm waiting to see if you've been waiting for me. Do you have your coffee ready? I'm not going to say it yet. You got your coffee? Let's have some coffee first. All right. Now on three. I was going to bring my show four out and sound it, but it's pretty early in the morning. And um, for those of you that tuned in to RobertPropheticCedar.com uh, yesterday, and uh, Pastor Dave was a guest on there, he was sounding the show four. And uh, I'm going to do that for you one day live, and I'm not going to do any takes or retakes uh, and show you how difficult it really is. It sounded just like I do when I sound mine. It's, you know, when you, what you see on here, sometimes I might have to do three or four more uh, retakes. So I'll do that for you one day. Now, depending where you are, as you're tuning in, it could be morning, depending where you live in the world, or what time you tune in, afternoon, evening, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to welcome you this day. Good morning, YouTube. Good afternoon. Good evening. Before we begin, and I explain that title, Oh My Giant Wave Hits New York City, I want to take you to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, this morning, or afternoon, or evening. I miss you guys. I miss you guys. You know, but it's it's April 19th. And let me explain before I take you to the book of Isaiah. And we're going to be in chapter 8, beginning... We'll begin at verse 10. It is the 19th. And we're still here. We are still here. Um, I looked out last night. It was a beautiful midnight blue sky. I could see the stars and the moon. It wasn't a red sky. I got up this morning. It's a little cloudy, but... It was a blue sky, a little bit gray. It wasn't pink. Uh, the 14th has come and passed, and we're still here. With that said, let me read to you from the authorized King James uh, Bible. Isaiah. Now, would you call Isaiah a prophet of the Lord? Isaiah uh, chapter 8, verse. we'll begin at verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 11. For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Not what's going on, possibly, in the future, like the psychics do. They read the future. That's not what uh, the living word tells us. Let him be your fear. Let the Lord be your dread. Don't go looking for things in the future. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. For a gin, and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall, and be broken, and be snared, and be taken. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. And I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Let me read that again. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep. And that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? 
Isaiah chapter 8. Now, as I said, we're still here. We're still here. California is still here. I went on Google Earth. It's still here. I got a map of uh, the United States and California was intact. Nothing dramatic happened. What we're doing, beloved, when we talk about the parable of the ten virgins, remember that? And uh, they were all virgins. And, and they were ready. Five were completely ready because they had oil for their lamps. They didn't stray. They didn't go where they shouldn't be going. They were ready. And when the call came out, they had oil for the lamps. Now the other five were ready in a sense, but they had let the oil run out. They started looking all around elsewhere instead of keeping their eye. And all their attention and all their focus on the bridegroom. They didn't take, they took their eye off the bridegroom rather and started looking into the world and the ways of the world. Now, when Jesus tells us, you know, and we hear the living word, that we are to watch for the signs, the current signs, and not be troubled. He said, see that you are not troubled by these things because they must happen. Nowhere in the living word does he tell us to go seek the destruction that is on the way. Just look at the current events. And that's what I do when I bring you the news. And I'm going to come back and bring you the news in a moment. Look at what's going on in your world today as, as it lines up with Matthew 24. He said these things must happen. And see that you be not troubled. But why are we in fear? Why are we looking? for things that haven't happened yet. And, you know, what I think it is, a lot of people had an awakening. I said it on uh, Robert's show last night uh, in 2011. You had a lot of uh, babies in Christ running around. And Pastor Dave, you say, how can you say that? And you're, uh, you're the one causing the division. Now, I want you to know I'm not a baby in Christ. I've been uh, in the Word my entire life. I grew up in a strict Christian household, and I am a licensed, ordained minister. I'm just not someone that was awoken in 2011. I've been doing this a long time. And, you know, I came out of the 501c3 uh, organized religion. I am or, uh, ordained non-denominational. But I belong to a, a very large Christian organization, and, and they offer schooling. And I am an elder. I have completed uh, the leadership program, a very intensive uh, study. And I am an elder in... Uh, my county, Oakland County, in Holly, Michigan. So I am a church leader. And I'm trying to come on here. And a lot of my, my friends that I've had so long, they'll come on and say, no, uh, he's on here causing division. I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to bring you the truth. That's all I've ever done. We are not to have a spirit of fear. Jesus tells us that. See that you are not troubled. He doesn't want us looking into the future. And, you know, it is going on so much. And what I think uh, may have happened is 2011 has come and gone and everyone was looking at the feast days you know last fall we had a blood moon over uh, Jerusalem and we're looking at Rosh Hashanah and I think people want it so bad if you want it so bad keep your focus keep the oil in your lamps don't let the oil run out it's okay if you fall asleep but when a cry comes out wake up with that oil, with plenty of oil. Your lamp full and plenty of oil to spare. And the way you're going to lose your oil is by taking your eye off of the living word, the gospel. Everything you need is here. And we are. You get mad at me when I do a program like last night or when I come out here and I speak the truth. But we are to test the spirits, and that's what I do. And as a watchman, when you see the sword coming, you know, we are to warn the people. And as I said, I've been doing this a while. I am. I am a church leader. And that's why when, when I speak out. Why are we looking to the future? We should be waiting, just watching what goes on. Uh, and know where we are, according to Bible prophecy. But let's not look for events that haven't happened yet. I'm not saying that people don't have visions or word from God. I truly believe they do. But if you look on YouTube, 
it's getting way out of hand. We're not to focus on that. And then it focuses on fear. And like I said, Satan is just running back and forth, back and forth, seeking whoever he can devour. And he, he works off of fear. Why, brothers and sisters, are you doing the opposite of what your Father in Heaven, what Jesus who came here and who is coming in the clouds and, and, and ready to take us home? Why are you doing the opposite? It's not me that's bickering and causing division. Brothers and sisters, you got your eyes in the wrong place. You got your eyes into the world. You're in worry, you're in fear, you're looking for him so strong that you've taken your eyes off him. And you're wondering, when's the next earthquake? When's the next uh, natural disaster? And California's gonna be missing. New York City's gonna be missing. And you know, it, you, you really, I'm just here to try to get your eyes back on the prize, on your Heavenly Father, on Yeshua. But we are not to have a spirit of fear. We're not to go looking way ahead of time. Because what does it say in the living word? Just when they say peace and safety, just when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come. None of this is for the church. We're not going to be here. And why are you looking for things that are going to pertain to the tribulation when the church is removed? Why are we even looking for that? Why would that be in our mind that we would have a dream like that? What else does it say? Just as it was, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be with the coming of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Life was going on as usual, as normal. There was no warning ahead of time. So, brothers and sisters, I'm not talking to the ones giving the prophecies now. You need to uh, deal with that yourself. When you're walking, you're treading on dangerous ground. It's getting to the point, if you're listening to me, and I know you are, and I know the ones out there that are doing this, and I, you know, I don't know the real in intent behind it. Um, if it's to get to get attention, by getting attention, it causes um, distraction and later destruction. We need to keep our eye on our heavenly Father. We're not to look for things ahead of time. I'm not saying we're not going to get a dream or a vision. You know, we, there's a lot going wrong. I see Satan running to and fro on YouTube. We've got brand new babies in Christ, and they're discerning the Word, the Living Word. They're teaching out of the the book. A revelation they are teaching as if they are Bible scholars which I find in in my 55 years very difficult to teach from that we're well, gonna make sure you're teaching the proper proper word it just can't be your opinion and I see young people in Christ teaching I see young people in Christ in age and babies in Christ that are recently saved brand new and they're not reading from the Bible at all. Not a word. And of all the prophets out there, where's the repentance? Where's the repentance? Why are we following, it's almost like we're following psychics that are dwelling into the future. And brothers and sisters on YouTube, you're running, you're, you're flocking to these psychics. It's very dangerous. And Satan knows it is, and that's why he's doing that. And when I come out against it, being a church leader, an elder, which I am, which I am. Like I said, I'm just not um, someone new to Christ that had an awakening in 2011. You know, I'm an elder, a leader of the church, and I'm, I, I sound the, the warning to get you back on the right track. To don't, don't focus on fear. Don't do as the, as the wizards and the psyches do. We're to watch for the signs. And that's where I'm trying to get you back. We're to watch for the signs as they happen currently, not as they happen in the future. And we're to not have fear, not have a spirit of fear. Know these things are, are to come, Matthew 24. Jesus said it plainly. See that you be not troubled. Why are we so troubled? Satan works off of fear. Now the giant wave that hit New York, hit New York City, I'm going to tell you about that real quick. Because I'm going to add a little bit of, of lightheartedness here. Because on a serious, it's a dangerous situation what's going on on YouTube. So brothers and sisters, that I, lo you know, I love you. I've prayed for your families. And then you come out against me and you say, I'm causing, I'm bickering and causing a division in the body of Christ. When I'm trying to get the body of Christ back together, then you go out and make a video bashing me. And you know, I'm very hurt by one brother. 
one brother in the Philippines. I'm very hurt. I'm very hurt. Giant wave hits New York City. Are you ready for this? We all know who Tim Tebow is. I'll give you some lighthearted humor. Tim Tebow was a giant wave of booze when he was spotted uh, at the, uh, who were they playing? Let me see. At the Yankees-Angels game. When they, you know, when the New Yorkers spotted him, it was, a, it was a giant wave, and it hit New York City. It was a giant wave of booze. And we all know who Tim Tebow is. Uh, he gives all glory to God and, and to Jesus when he's out on the field. Tim Tebow has worked to do if he's uh, going to win over New York sports fans. The new backup quarterback for the Jets was booed at Yankee Stadium on Sunday night when he was shown on the giant video board, even though he was wearing a New York Yankees cap. I mean, a giant wave of boos came from the crowd. So I guess you could say the giant wave did hit New York City, but it was a wave of boos. That's the only wave we should be looking at. We need to love one another. Don't let fear overtake you. That's how Satan is the one. That's how he tears down the church. Not I. I just bring you the truth. God bless everyone. Leave me comments. I'll be back with the news.